Good morning, my beloved Odooers. Today, we're talking scrap, specifically how to scrap components and products during and after the manufacturing process. You see, sometimes a component or finished product can't be used for a variety of reasons. Perhaps the vendor sent us a defective component, or maybe a component or finished product was damaged during or after manufacturing. Scrapping a component or product removes it from our inventory and places it in a location designated to store scrap. Odoo also gives us the option to replenish the product quantity that was scrapped, allowing us to get back to manufacturing as quickly as possible. Ready to see how this all works? All right, let's get scrapping. Now, the first thing I should mention is that the scrapping process works a little differently when using one-step manufacturing compared to two or three-step manufacturing. Let's take a look at the one-step process first. To begin, I need to go to the inventory application, select configuration, and then our warehouses. I'm gonna go ahead and use our main warehouse for this example, and we wanna make sure that manufacturer one step is enabled in our manufacturer section. Then I'm gonna click on products, products once again, and then select our wooden pole product. This is the component used for our coat rack product, and it's the component that we'll be scrapping as an example for the first part of this tutorial. Under the inventory tab here, we want to make sure that the buy route is selected in the operations section. This is the route that will be used to replenish the product after we scrap it. We can always select a different route if we want to replenish it using a different method, but at least one route needs to be selected in order to use replenishment. Since we've enabled the buy route, we need to click on the purchase tab, and we need to make sure that a vendor has been added as well as the price that they sell this product for. Perfect. Looks like we're all set there. The last thing I want to point out is that we only have one unit of our wooden pole in stock, which will come into play shortly. With all of our settings the way we want them, I'm going to jump over to our manufacturing application and create a new MO by clicking on Operations, Manufacturing Orders, and then New. I'll go ahead and select our coat rack and then confirm the MO. Now, let's say that the wooden pole component I pulled from the inventory has a big crack in it. That won't make for a very sturdy coat rack now, will it? So I'm gonna click on the scrap button here at the top of the page, and then the scrap products pop-up window will appear. In the window, I'll start by clicking the product drop-down menu. Notice how the only products that can be selected are the two components used to manufacture the finished product, not the finished product itself. Remember that because we'll come back to it later. For now, I'll just select the wooden pull product in the product field, and I'll leave the quantity field set to one since that's the amount I'm scrapping. I'm also going to enable the replenish quantities checkbox since I want to get a new unit of the wooden pole to continue with the MO. Finally, I'll scrap the products by clicking the scrap products button. And once we do, a few things happen. First in the chatter, the MO status changes from ready to waiting since we're missing the wooden pole component. Also, the component status field now reads not available since the component is now in stock. We also have two new smart buttons at the top of the page. The first one is titled scraps, which shows us all the scrap orders created for this MO. And the second smart button is titled purchases, which shows us the purchase orders that were created to replenish the wooden pole product. I'm gonna confirm the product purchase order by clicking on the smart button, clicking confirm, then receive products followed by a validate to enter the new component into the inventory. When I return to the MO by using the breadcrumbs here, the component status now reads available. And at the status of the MO in the chatter, changed back from waiting to ready. I'm now able to manufacture the coat rack, at which point I'll click on produce all to complete the MO. Very cool. Now, I should mention that this process is a bit different if there are more components in stock. In that case, when a component is scrapped, the MO remains ready and the component status still reads available. No purchase order is created as the user is expected to simply take the scrap quantity from the existing inventory. Now, before we leave this page, I want to use this completed MO to show you one more thing. Remember how when we were only able to select the components in the product field on the scrap orders pop-up window, well, now the product has been manufactured. If we click the scrap button once again, the product field here will allow us to scrap the finished product. I'll select the coat rack, enable replenish quantities, and then scrap. Since the coat rack uses a manufacturer route, a new MO has been created to replace the unit of the product, which we can see by going to operations, 
manufacturing orders, and then clicking the most recently created MO. All right, before we finish today, I just wanna show you the scrapping process when using two or three step manufacturing. Fairly similar, but different enough that it's worth taking a look at. We'll start by returning back to the inventory application, clicking configuration, warehouses, and then selecting our main warehouse once again. This time we'll select the pick components, then manufacture two-step option in our manufacturer section. Then we'll return to the manufacturing app to create another MO for our coffee table. And just like last time, we're gonna go to operations, manufacturing orders, and we'll select new and we'll add coffee table. You'll notice that once we confirm the order, the MO status in the chatter appears as waiting. Another operation. This is because two and three step manufacturing require components to be transferred to the production location before the MO is marked as ready. With that in mind, I'll click the transfer smart button at the top of the page to open the pick components transfer. And then I'll simply go ahead and select validate to process it. When I return to the MO, the status is now ready in the chatter. All right, let's say that the tabletop component that we picked has a large scratch on top of it. I'll scrap it the same way as before by clicking on scrap and selecting tabletop in the drop down field. Once we do enabling the replenish quantities checkbox here and then clicking scrap products. Once I do the MO status changes to waiting back here in the chatter, just like in our previous example. However, unlike one step manufacturing, no purchase order is created to replenish the scrap quantities. Instead, a new picking order has been created to transfer the replacement tabletop to the production location, which I can access by clicking on the transfer smart button at the top of the page and selecting the pick components transfer marked as ready. I'll transfer this by clicking validate and return to the MO by the breadcrumbs once again, where I can go ahead and see that the MO status appears as ready and available. And that's how you replenish scrap quantities using two or three step manufacturing. Now, in the case we were able to process the replenishment picking transfer right away since we were had an extra tabletop in stock. However, if there were no extra tabletops, we would need to manually create an order to replenish them before validating the pick. A purchase order if they were bought or a manufacturing order if they are manufactured. And that, my dear Odoers, brings us to the end of another great tutorial. Today I showed you how to scrap components and finish products from manufacturing orders and how to replenish the quantities that were scrapped. That's all for today, and I'll see you next time.